Welcome back, and let's get a bit deeper into the functionality of the PC Interop plugin. You saw in the first video I just did a selection in Photoshop and hit the Transfer to ZBrush action button. When I do a selection, I always hold on the Shift key, just in order to get a perfectly square selection, and therefore get a square texture over the ZBrush. You can do a rectangle as well, however ZBrush will squash your texture back into a square and you get a bit of a seam at the air the edges so it's not ideal. What happens when the action runs is Photoshop saves out the contents of your selection on the polarized layer and the unpolarized layer. These two layers always need to exist or the action will just error out. Polarized in my case is the flat diffuse and unpolarized the original lit and shaded texture. The action will also save out a merged visible result of your entire layer stack. And what that can be used for is, for example, if you already have some displacements and you want to preview them in ZBrush or use them as reference, modify them, whatever, this data gets sent over to ZBrush as well. All of the files get saved out into your C temp directory, which I hope you all have. And that is all for the transfer to ZBrush action, really. If you watched the first video, you've already seen the two most important buttons in ZBrush, which are Import from Photoshop and Export Displacement to Photoshop. There's a few more that are worth talking about. For example, under the Import from Photoshop button, there's a PSD REST slider. What that does is it tells ZBrush how many million polygons the plane is supposed to have that you want to work on. In the tooltips, if you hover over it, there's some information. For example, if you have a 1K ma map, your plane only needs to be 1 million polygons, a 2K, 4 million, a 4K, 16 million. And you can already see where the plugin kind of comes in because ZBrush is not good with more than 16 million polygons. So if you would bring in a 16K map into ZBrush and start sculpting, you would not get 16K resolution out of it. You would get maybe 4K. So, I have a few options here, 4, 8, 12, and 16. I usually stay between 8 and 12, uh, which is still quite comfortable to work with. So, import from Photoshop. Like I said in the first video, confirm this dialog. It's always going to be there. And we should get our plane. And by default, ZBrush displays the unpolarized texture. However, in the display tab, you can switch between the polarized one, the unpolarized one, and the merged result of your layer stack, which in my case is the displacement I already have. Underneath all this is the deactivate texture button, pretty self-explanatory. will just give you your flat result of the material that you have applied to your plane. Now, it would be cool if I could see the displacement that I already have, which is where the displacement preview comes in. A few things in there, apply bump, apply disp, delete bump and disp. There's a multiplier for each the bump and the displacement. So, set to 6 here, it's just a random number, and apply displacement and I'll get asked which layer I want to apply. You can apply the polarized, the unpolarized, the merged, which in my case is the displacement I want. But, like I said, if you don't have it yet, it might be nice to apply just a base to work with, or you can use your color as a mask or what, what not. So let's apply the merged, and in a few seconds we get this dialog. This basically asks you to name a layer. Unfortunately, I cannot do that for you. You always have to enter that. And the name has to be specific because I'm running a lot of operations based on the layer name, unfortunately. So I need to name it this base. If I don't na name it this base, the script will not let me continue. So let's name it this base and make it happy. 
So the displacement's been applied. If I deactivate the texture for a second, you can see it. And I can start sculpting pretty much right away. And one thing that might be interesting to know is I store a morph target by default. So if you want to delete your brush stroke, hit the B key, M for morph and O, select the morph brush. And then you can just morph back to your original. So you're deleting the brush stroke. Another thing that is probably good to know, change the C intensity here. If I sculpt in the area where there has been displacement applied that came out of Photoshop, so down here for example, and in this case I'm just going to go to my layers and turn off the this base layer, which is the same as delete bump and disp. You can see I have a bit of an aftershadow effect of the original displacement in my brush stroke. The reason for that is that ZBrush stores the difference between your base surface and your new surface when you do brush stroke. When you delete the base surface or deactivate it, it gets subtracted and you end up with this negative imprint of your original one. There's a way around it. Um, if you delete the displacement for a second here and you apply your imported displacement out of Photoshop as a bump map. Same dialog as with apply disp. And the bump map has been applied. You can see it looks pretty much identical with the displacement. At least as long as you don't look at it from the side that is because there's no true 3D information. But if I sculpt now and turn off the displacement you can see I have a clean brush stroke without any input information versus the brush stroke that was based on true displacements. So keep that in mind when you sculpt over areas that have applied displacement that you will get a few problems. So if you just want to quickly preview something that you've already done, might be better to use it as a bump map instead. But of course if you want to modify your displacement that came out of Zebra, uh, out of Photoshop, apply this is the way to go. If I have a bump map applied, just redo this quickly, and press the export disk to Photoshop, the plugin will warn me that there's still either base displacement or bump active, and ask me if I wish to delete it. So that's just a reminder, if you don't delete it, it'll obviously come in into Photoshop as well. So you might not have your brush stroke separately, which you don't want, or you might be doubling up on your displacements, whatever. So just make the decision if you want to take it over with you or not. If you delete it, it'll just send it over as is. Back in Photoshop, let's have a look at some of the other actions that are there. There's the discard connection button. Basically, when I'm sending stuff over to ZBrush, I'm store, storing the current selection in a channel called Selection ZBrush. The discard connection will just delete this one channel. If I were to send stuff over to ZBrush again while a channel like this exists, and I bring stuff back in to Photoshop, Photoshop would get a bit confused. But let's have a bit of a closer look at the bring in displacement action. If I look at the file that I'm exporting out of ZBrush, you can see that the midpoint seems to be a bit off. So it's not 50% gray. 
what I'm doing in the bring in displacement action is I'm doing a high pass with the maximum amount just to ensure a 50% gray. Plus, I'm doing a feathering of the edges just to blend everything at the borders together. You might not want that. In this case, go into the action and turn off anything that is starting at the high pass. There's also, I'm also doing an overlay on the layer that I'm bringing in. You might not want that either. There's a section here that is set current layer to overlay. So you can modify it there if you want to. Just for the kind of high frequency work I've been using it for. Both the high pass, the feathering and the overlay work pretty well. But it's up to you. If you don't want to do it, you might have to do some manual grading on the layer you bring in. The update current displacement action literally j does just that. Um, if I have the layer that I brought in from ZBrush selected and I'm making changes in ZBrush and re-exporting, this way I'm just replacing the current layer with a new one. 